right. One of my favorite topics um, to chat with credit unions about is tokenization and digital currencies. And I'm happy to present this as part of our Learning with Leverage series today. Um, as a reminder, you know, tokenization and digital currencies, really more tokenization is shaping the future of payments and credit unions, how you interact with your members, how you interact and um, attract and acquire and retain younger members into your membership field, which will be very important for the future of your credit union. So a little bit about myself, a few of you, I recognize your names. I'm Stephanie Hangey. I'm the Director of Marketing and Consultant Services here at Leverage Payment Solutions. Um, I am a credit union uh, veteran. I worked at a credit union for 10 years. I reside in Indiana, so I work for a large credit union with a focus on payments. But outside of payments and working at credit union, you know, I'm just like everybody else. I've got a personal life. I like to cook. I've got family, I've got some little grandkids, the future members of our credit unions. Um, and so happy to talk to you a little bit about tokenization and digital currencies today. Um, most importantly, just a little bit about leverage. We are nationwide. We are now in 32 states. We offer a variety of solutions to credit unions um, nationwide. So hopefully we are working with all of you in some way. But when we think about um, the items we want to talk about today, we'll talk a little about some trends, tokenization, the wallets, digital issuance, and how they really all um, come in together. And really, at this point, mobile wallets are table stakes. You have to issue a card in order for a program to be successful. You can't ask someone to use their debit card if you haven't issued the actual card to them. And same with a mobile and digital wallet. That's where it's going in the industry. The digital mobile wallet is almost as important as actually issuing a card to a member. So we think about who our members are and how they are spending and what they're using. Um, you know, it's really surprising to see the number of, of boomers who have changed their behavior recently because of new technologies. And that's a big shift for boomers. I assume that most of your credit unions have a, a large uh, boomer generation. The average credit union member age is 53. Um, it, it continues to increase. So one of the strategies for lowering the age of your credit union membership would be to offer tokenization, mobile digital wallets, other ways that the younger demographics and generations are using. You know, we've continued to experience the decline of cash and checks. If you're not aware, Target announced recently that they're no longer going to accept personal checks. They see this as a way to streamline the checkout process. They also see this as a way to um, prevent theft through um, check um, uh, bad check writing and members or customers who write bad checks knowingly and then that's a loss for Target. Um, so they are no longer going to accept cash and, or checks only, but they're really focusing on cards, uh, purchases in their app, and then also the mobile and digital wallets. So when you see a large national issuer come out and say that, you know that that's what the consumer trends are going to be. Um, you know, the younger generation, the Gen Xers, millennials, and so far, you know, that is a different world for them. You know, most of them have probably never written a check. Um, they don't have checks. And so as, a, as an issuer, we need to think about why we continue to issue checks and how we can stop um, members from using them and focus on more digital environments. So MasterCard recently, to just really illustrate the growth, um, the trajectory growth of tokenized uh, transactions and digital payments, um, MasterCard recently announced that their tokenized transactions have increased 50% year over year. And uh, that's really an important metric to know. Visa recently announced that uh, they hit the 10 billion, with a B, tokenized transaction mark. And that was 10 years after the rollout of tokenization. Uh, I worked at a credit union and I left the credit union my tenure there. I left in 2014 and one of my last projects there was to be an early adopter of Apple Pay, Samsung Pay and Google Pay for tokenization. And it's really just interesting that it really took a pandemic to change the shift in behavior for consumers. And then also to see that Visa has hit the 10 billion transaction mark for tokenized transactions. So it really is important that if you are not offering tokenization, that you adopt that and offer it. And if you are offering tokenization, it is crucial that you are monitoring the number of transactions and how your members are adopting and how really more importantly, your team working at the credit union who's working with those frontline members, how they understand it and how they use it. So when we think about, you know, tap and go transactions that are also a tokenized transaction in the PayWave logo on a card, um, it, that has been out for over 10 years. We're really seeing increased focus on issuers saying, I want to offer this. You know, tap and go transactions that are tokenized are secure, they're convenient, they're touch-free. 
but it's also confusing when you go to the terminal at a, you know, a POS terminal, which is the only place a tap and go card can be used that can't be used in a virtual environment, but a tap and go card, you know, when you, when you get up to the terminal, it's more of, am I inserting this card? Am I swiping my card? Am I tapping my card? Whereas before we just slid it, we knew what to do. Um, so there is a little bit of confusion. So, you know, a chip works 99% of the time and, and the tap and go works other times, but it's one of those confusing technologies. We offer so many opportunities how you can use the card. It can be con confusing to your card holder. So offering that consistent payment messaging that you're doing to your members of how you want them to use your card. Here is your card for your new checking account, or here is your card that I've reissued you because your, your previous card expired. Be sure to upload this in a mobile a mobile wallet. We have offer Samsung Pay. We offer Apple Pay. Having an employee there at the credit union who is vigilant on offering and asking members as they come in, are you roll enrolling these cards in our mobile and digital wallet will be important for your future of your credit union. Because contactless experiences are really here to stay. You know, for credit unions to remain relevant and competitive in the future, remaining top of wallet you need to be offering contactless experiences, whether it's in a, in a mobile digital wallet or in a tap and go card for that contactless uh, tap tokenization experience, because those are also fraud protection um, experiences for the credit union too, because the 16 digit personal identification number is reorganized into a token and shift it every time um, that you can um, use your card. And so when you think of all the contactless experiences that go beyond you know, how a customer uh, member might use their card for purchases such as you know, order ahead, pick up at the counter, drive through at Starbucks, you know, a hotel checkout, it's digital keys now, grocery orders, delivery, and curbside pickup. Those contactless experiences are really, you know, just how we live now and what we expect and the choices that you can have as a consumer. But our members are using a, a variety of payment methods and so are businesses. So if your credit union has a business focus, a commercial area, they are also using, um, you know, uh, mobile and digital transactions. So the information on the left is comparing it to um, uh, 2022 to 2023. And you can see that the rise of mobile and digital went from 65% to 73%. Not surprising, paper check declined from 80% to 67%. Wires also uh, declined. Um, commercial cards declined. So corporate cards, if you will. So, um, you know, they aren't necessarily pulling out a card. They're using other technologies such as a, a mobile payment. ACH volume declined. And so as you see what declined, you want to be focusing again on that mobile digital wallet for your consumer business as well, because there is less reliance um, on former payment methods and the diversification is happening fast. So you need to be sure that your teams at the credit union are aware of this. This is information you can go back and share on businesses aren't writing as many checks and that's okay with you, right? And they're not wiring money as much and they're not using corporate cards. They're using the mobile and digital wallets. So you wanna make sure that you have all of your bins enabled to accept those type of transactions. So when I was, you know, preparing for this presentation, um, you know, I recently presented this at the um, Southeastern uh, Credit Union Conference a couple of weeks ago, and you know, there, there was a little bit about digital currencies, some interest in that. Um, you know, honestly, in terms of digital currencies, those really aren't, you know, blockchain and crypto. Those really aren't affecting credit unions. They really aren't at a point that it's critical for credit unions to be thinking, I need to offer this. This is important to my membership. Is it something you could be aware of? Sure, but I really wanna focus on what's gonna help your credit union grow and where you need to be thinking about that strategy, your digital strategy. And hopefully you have a, a roadmap already um, uh, outlined and you are moving forward with that, but really focusing on the tokenization, tokenized transaction rather than other digital currencies. So that's really what we're gonna focus on um, for the rest of the after the presentation. So the first step really in, in tokenized, um, uh, Currencies is obviously tokenizing the bin, and it's really you know done in three steps. And with tokenization, you take the PAN, the personal identification number, the static account number, and you move it to a token is what happens in a tokenized transaction. And therefore, when you think back to all the card, the big card compromises with TJ Maxx 
and Target and other national issuers, you know, and the 16 digit PAN being exposed that led to, um, you know, all the card reorders, the member disruption, the frustration of all these card compromises. And then it could be a crucial point that your card no longer is top of wallet. So the PAN versus the, uh, the tokenization um, is an important um, strategy for your credit union to have. So the tokenization process is, you know, it begins with taking something of value, converting it to a token, and it happens all in a matter of seconds. And merchants, um, you know, it's, it's frustrating to me when I hear merchants complaining about how high interchange is, that they have to pay for the service to be able to offer cards. Well, you know, part of Target's um, announcement yesterday was uh, streamlining the process, but also reducing the risk of theft. And I thought, okay, great, then you do, you do see the value of accepting cards. You do, you're relying on the value of being able to accept mobile and digital wallet transactions because you know that security is built in. Well, that security, that process all takes, you know, development and there's an expense to it. So that interchange that, you know, issuers earn is justified, in my opinion. I'm, I'm sure you probably would agree as well, because this is part of where our world is going and, and that development process, you know, needs to be acquired. So, you know, when you think about mobile wallets, they're becoming universal and how consumers, you know, use their cards because a tap and go card, you know, when you think about that pay wave logo, tap and go card with the antenna embedded, that can only be used at a, at a POS enabled terminal at a merchant in a, in a physical location. The card can be used in many other locations, but to actually tap it, that's only one place. So when you think about where the trajectory of transaction growth is happening, it's happening in e-commerce. And this really spells the opportunity for issuers to invest in digital capabilities. Um, you know, you think about how many of you using a hotel or airline loyalty program, those are all stored in mobile wallets along with bank cards that consumers use to make digital transactions. But consumers will continue to shift away from cash that was accelerated during the pandemic. And, you know, mobile and digital wallets are the demand. And we really need to be talking about that at account opening, at reissue. It's really the focus of how we engage um, with our members. It's critically important um, when you think about the different generations and the trends of what consumers think is most convenient to use. Um, this is a study from uh, 2022. Uh, and Gen Z and millennials um, and their use of digital payment apps, you know, PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, Apple Pay, Google Pay, Facebook Pay. There's a variety. They're willing to use a variety of things. And so when we are talking with our membership and deciding what's best for the credit union, it might not be for the member that's now that average age of 53. It's the member that's coming, the member that you're developing, the member that you want to attract as well, and knowing that they are they're willing to use a variety of payments. Um, and so when you look at the percentage of people who use a mobile wallet at least a few times a week, uh, you will look at, it's interesting, Gen Z's 34%, younger millennials are 35, older millennials 28, baby boomers maybe only 1%. Well, that's the majority of your membership maybe. So who do you wanna attract and grow to your, to your field of membership? It's the younger demographic. And why do uh, you know consumers use the mobile wallets? It's, it's the convenience, it's the ease of use, it's easier. It's I've always got my phone. I'm never gonna go anywhere without my phone. I might leave the house and forget my wallet. I've got my car keys, I've got my phone, but if my phone has a mobile wallet in it that I can use at multiple places, that's why it is so easy and convenient for me to use as long as a merchant you know, offers that functionality. So based on a world pay research of America's heavy use of credit of cards, especially credit cards, it will continue, but more will continue to migrate to digital wallets. It's estimated digital wallet share transaction volume will double by 2027. Um, digital wallet share of e-commerce is projected to rise to 52% by 2027. And the actual usage of a physical credit and debit card will begin to decline. So at some point, you know, we really need to think about, well, how important is it to issue a physical card? You know, do I need to focus on digital issuance? Um, you know, I know some members were always going to want to want that physical card, but is that really part of a strategy going forward? You know, if Target is going to stop accepting personal checks, I think this is the beginning of when we might see the shift of the decline 
of personal check writing. You know, it's it said the penny is going to go away. The check's going to go away. I'm not sure I think that either one's going to go away fully, but when Target, this big national issuer, a big national retailer that many love, especially the younger demographic, um, you know, if they're not accepting personal checks, this is really a, bi a big shift that we're going to see. So the second step in that tokenization, digital wallet um, uh, path is digital issuance. And that's where when a member opens a new account, rather than instant issuing a hard copy card, you're going to digitally issue a card to be provisioned into their mobile wallet that they already have. And so for the card holder, it's the you know instant, de uh, instant gratification. It's more than modernization um, to improve an experience. It's really what is going to increase your revenue. It's going to put your top wallet literally from the moment that the member walks out. So, you know, your digital strategy in terms of tokenization and tokenized transactions and how you're going to capture younger members and how you're going to maintain top of wallet status and grow transactions is really um, maybe starting with the digital issuance step as well. So digital issuance drives relationships as well. Um, when you think about the um, ability to reduce the cost of a instant issue machine, um, the hardware that you have, and then the software that has to be updated constantly, this is a good um, value proposition for the credit union. Um, there's higher card usage on average and top of wallet status with digitally issued cards because it gains that top of wallet status pretty quickly. And then when you think about the shift in behaviors and usage, um, you know, consumers in the 18 to 34 age group, you know, 95% use a digital banking app. So they're ready to use a digitally issued card. 81% um, of the age group, 35 to 40, 54, use their banks, their issuers, mobile app. And then, you know, that declines pretty sharply with the group over 55. But they're not the they're not the group of your future. They may be your current members, and I know you want to keep them happy. But you need to be thinking in the future: How is my credit union going to grow and thrive, and um, have new members that I am needing their uh, spending solutions, and that we engage with them more fully? So um, consumers in the credit unions that don't have a digital credit or debit card is like 59%. And, you know, we want to see that number uh, reduced because that was one of the bigger strategies for your credit union is digital issuance. So in 2023, more consumers did receive a digital card um, to use while waiting for the physical card. So it might be part of your strategy. I'm going to offer digital cards, but I am also going to still issue a hard copy card. I want to make sure they can use it everywhere. And that's great. So that, that is increasing. So that will be important to consider as you uh, think about your digital strategy and tokenize um, transaction strategy as well. But the third step in the um, uh, digital strategy for tokenization is you know, contactless payments, which we, I've talked about a few times and the demand of it, um, and if issuers are not offering it. And that contactless payment can be, I've got a tap and go card, or it's, I've got mobile wallets, I've got tokenization, I have Apple Pay. Because if I have Apple Pay, I can take my phone to a terminal that's enabled to accept a tap and go transaction. I can just tap my phone. So if you have not already invested in offering tap and go cards, I think that's okay. I'm not sure I would recommend in investing in a tap and go card because we know transaction growth is not happening at a POS physical in, in store environment. Transaction growth is happening in e-commerce. So if you can't use a tap and go card in e-commerce uh, environment, does it make sense? Where's your future of transaction growth happening? Digital, mobile. If my phone has a mobile wallet, Apple Pay, or something similar, Apple Pay generates 95% of the transactions. So usually I just talk about Apple Pay. Then you already have contactless payments. Um, so, you know, I was at Walgreens recently and there literally was a note at the terminal that an employee had written and taped on the counter. I'm sure this wasn't Walgreens corporate initiative, but it told me how to use a plastic contactless enabled card, you know, because it's confusing and, and they you get there and you tap it. 
well, the terminal wasn't ready for me to tap it. So I tapped it and then I stood back and then I looked and I thought, well, do I need to put it in? Do I need to swipe it? What do I need to do? I was in an airport a couple of weeks ago and this, you know, it was a very long line, you know, in between flights, somebody, I wanted to buy a bottle of water. There was a person, probably 10, you know, other people in front of me waiting and the person in front just constantly just kept tapping their car, tapping, 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 tapping. And they just weren't doing it right. And, and it's funny, it's like, all you have to do is tap, right? But then it became frustrating to everybody behind. But, you know, it is important that we that we talk to our members about the tap and code cards and how they use them. But no, merchants can transfigure, uh, they can uh, configure their terminals to, it's not a tap and go, it's tap and put in your pin. I, wa I almost walked out of the store because I tapped and it beeped and I thought I was done. And the clerk called me back, she's like, yeah, put your pin in still which I didn't think that was part of tap and go, but they get to configure their terminals how they'd like to do that. So keep that in mind that that's, um, you know, the experience you remember might have. So, you know, the one place that tap and go cards really are pretty great is the gas station. You know, I usually don't get out of the car at the gas station with my phone to make a payment at the terminal. Um, you know, I stand right there at the, at, the, at the gas pump and being able to tap it is much faster than inserting my chip and waiting for it to, you know, access the functions that card has. So, you know, not to say tap and go cards aren't exciting and cool. They are. But the best place is at the gas station for me when it's raining. And that really does improve my satisfaction with my issuer. I'm, I'm very happy that I have that card. So, you know, when you're coming up with that digital strategy, you've got a, several things to think of. But the frequency is really what we want to think about, really what we want our members to think about, um, how often they use it, because we want to earn the extra interchange for more transactions. And so you can see um, this is specific to credit unions, 10% uh, use it on a daily basis, um, the tap and go functionality. 30% a few times a week, 30% a few times a month, 20% a few times a year, and 10% are never going to use it. That might be an older person or just, I just forgot to use it. I, I inserted it and then I realized I could have tapped it. That happens to me. So I really do think there's validity in the future of contactless payments, which again are tokenized transactions for you as well. So when you look at um, just the generational, you know, preferences, if you will. This is the first time we've had seven generations, you know, um, out there. And so we really do have to talk about the generations more than just your membership. And, you know, when you think about Gen Zs and boomers, you know, it's it's interesting that, you know, boomers are, I used a greater variety of payment methods than I did a year ago. But Gen Z, 80% of them use a different payment variety than a year ago. And who do you want to be your future member? We of course, we want to keep the boomers happy. We want them to be in our membership because they probably have less debt and more assets. But we have to be thinking about who is our future. And it's Gen Z and millennials. And when you think about, you know, how many times I use a contactless card, you know, again, Gen Z has done it more than millennials. So when you think about the focus of what your payments program should be and the importance of tokenization, the importance of using, promoting, communicating that you have it, you offer it, and why it's important. It's not just an alternative to a cash check or a card. It's really the future of your credit union. And, you know, here at Leverage Payment Solutions, we have a team, a consulting team, who is here to help credit unions grow and thrive. All of our uh, Leverage Payment Solutions who have an issuing product with um, us have a complimentary dedicated portfolio consultant if you do not issue um, a product with Leverage Payment Solutions, you still can access the portfolio consulting team. Happy to do a complimentary cons consultation for you to talk about what's holding you back, how you're tracking your mobile and digit wallet performance is also important, how it compares to um, industry trends. So please know that you have this available to you as part of the Learning with Leverage series with Leverage Payment Solutions. We are here to help. Um, you'll get a copy of the um, presentation. Also the recording, you can reach out to consulting at myleverage.com. For additional information or questions, happy to answer them myself or any of the team. I'd love to connect with you in any other way outside of today, but appreciate your attendance and hope you learned something new and look forward to hearing from you as well.